This is uh, Colonel Mamade Dumbuya, and this is a photo of, of him. Did we train and equip him? By name, I, I cannot identify that. Well, that's him with a bunch of U.S. service members outside of our embassy. And just months after this photo was taken in 2021, he led a coup in Guinea and, and threw out the, the leader. Does that concern you? Congressman, core values is what we start off with in IMA pr programs. Do we, we share core values with Colonel Dembuya? Core values. I will repeat that. He led a coup. We do. Files released by the United States military to the U.S. Congress show that Colonel Mamadi Dumbuya was trained by the French and also the United States Special Forces in paramilitary tactics, espionage, and subversion. Have you ever wondered why it was relatively easy for the Sahel countries such as Guinea, Mali, and Niger to topple their governments? Well, the answer might just shock you. You had General Moussa Bamou overthrow the government in Niger. And it won't surprise anybody here that we trained him. The person who overthrew the democratically elected government in Niger went to the National Defense University, trained at Fort Benning, Georgia. So do we share core values with Musa Bamou? If you look at Chad, Burkina Faso, Mali, Mauritania, Niger, in a lot of these countries, the coup is led by someone we trained. The coup in Guinea, Mali, and other Sahel countries within a year of each other was by no means a coincidence. It reflects a broader trend in the Sahel region and West Africa, where Western-trained officers have been involved in military coups since 2021, with coups occurring in Burkina Faso, Guinea, and Mali. Some of these coup leaders have maintained close relationships with their American trainers, who not only provided military tactics, but also lessons on safeguarding democracy and human rights. The recent coup in Guinea, led by Colonel Mamadi Dumbuya, has left U.S. forces and officials taken aback, as Dumbuya was a familiar figure to them due to their close working relationship. The colonel, who had been leading a group of about 100 Special Forces members in counterterrorism training, surprised U.S. instructors by orchestrating the coup while they were in the country. The timing of the coup, coupled with Dumbuya's previous collaboration with American forces, has left U.S. officials puzzled and embarrassed as they were caught off guard by his actions. Dumbuya's coup was reportedly motivated by his disapproval of President Alpha Conde's move to amend the Constitution to allow himself to serve a third term. And despite his previous alliance with Conde, tensions within the defense establishment, particularly with Guinea's defense minister, Mohamed Diané, likely contributed to Dumbuya's decision to seize power. The US has been quick to distance itself from any involvement in the coup emphasizing that it had no prior knowledge or indication of the events unfolding in Guinea. Video footage showing American soldiers arriving at the U.S. Embassy in Guinea has led to suspicions of U.S. involvement, but U.S. officials have clarified that the soldiers' presence was not indicative of support for the coup. The U.S. Congress is currently in turmoil, and there are a lot of questions being asked with no concrete answers provided. This is one of the biggest military blunders of the 21st century. Retired General Joseph Votel, who led U.S. Special Operations Command from 2014 to 2016, expressed disappointment, noting that regression on democratic values is concerning. This sentiment underscores the dilemma facing the Biden administration. They must decide whether to sever a military partnership crucial for combating terrorism in a region increasingly plagued by instability or seek a way to engage with the military junta. The strategic significance of Niger to the United States underscores the complexity of its relationship with the country, especially in the face of recent military coups. Despite the challenges posed by the coup and the uncertainty surrounding the political landscape, experts familiar with the region argue that abandoning Niger is not a viable option for the US. Over the years, the United States has made substantial investments in Niger, both financially and strategically. This includes significant financial support for building up and training the Niger military, amounting to $500 million since 2012. A substantial portion of this funding, $100 million, went into establishing the base at Agadez, which serves as a key hub 
for US drone operations targeting violent extremist groups in the region. The importance of the Agadez base and the broader US military presence in Niger is underscored by the increasing threat posed by violent extremist groups operating in the Sahel region. As these groups expand their reach, there is a growing need for effective counter-terrorism measures, and the Agadez base plays a crucial role in this regard. Moreover, the geopolitical competition in Africa, particularly from China and Russia, further highlights the strategic significance of maintaining a presence in Niger. Both China and Russia have been actively seeking footholds in Africa, and the US cannot afford to cede ground in a region of strategic importance. Despite the setbacks posed by the recent coups, former advisors argue that these events should not be interpreted as a failure of US military training efforts in the region. Instead, they emphasize the need for continued engagement and the exploration of alternative strategies to support stability and governance in Niger and the broader Sahel region. Retired Major General J. Marcus Hicks, who held a prominent position as the commander of US Special Operations Forces Africa, recounts his impression of General Bamu, a Nigerian military leader with whom he developed a close relationship. Hicks describes Bamu as an impressive figure, fluent in English and having undergone extensive military training in the United States over nearly two decades. Their friendship was marked by numerous discussions over the challenges posed by extremist groups infiltrating Niger and the distressing deterioration of the country's situation in recent years. Hicks expresses deep disappointment upon learning of Bamu's involvement in the coup, considering him as a beacon of hope for Niger's future. Despite the political instability in neighboring countries due to military coups, Niger, and particularly Bamu, had remained a crucial partner for the U.S. military in the region. A U.S. official familiar with the U.S.-Niger military relationship also acknowledges Bamu as a trusted partner, but underscores the dominance of local dynamics and politics over international concerns. The extent of Bamu's involvement in plotting the coup remains unclear, with reports suggesting that it was spearheaded by another military leader, General Abdurrahmane Chiani. However, Bamu and other Nigerian military leaders subsequently endorsed the coup, raising questions about their roles and motivations. Lieutenant Colonel Paul Henry Sandayogo, a Burkinabi officer involved in a 2022 mutiny, is highlighted as another example of a military figure who received American military training. Sandaugo participated in various U.S. engagements and exercises, illustrating the extent of U.S. military involvement in training personnel from African countries. Pentagon spokesperson Brigadier General Patrick Ryder acknowledged that several Nigerian military personnel implicated in the coup received U.S. training. However, he emphasized that there is no direct correlation between the training provided by the U.S. and the coup attempt. Ryder stressed that U.S. training programs always adhere to principles of democratic governance, civilian rule of the military, and the rule of law in military-civilian relations. Despite these assertions, there is acknowledgement within the Department of Defense, DOD, that the situation appears unfavorable. West African soldiers typically undergo two types of U.S. military instruction. Some, like General Bamu, participate in theoretical courses in the U.S., while others engage in joint exercises in the region, focusing on tactical skills like patrolling or securing buildings. However, there are concerns about the applicability of American military training to local contexts and cultures. Some argue that imposing an American approach to fighting terrorism may not always be suitable or effective in African contexts. Additionally, the promotion of democratic values by US officials can be overshadowed by local political realities, as seen in the case of Mali in 2020, when protests led to a military coup. The future of the US military assistance relationship with Niger remains uncertain due to legal requirements and geopolitical considerations. Under US law, military aid to a country is typically terminated in the event of a coup, unless exceptions are made for national security reasons. The Biden administration has refrained from officially characterizing the events in Niger as a coup, citing the fluidity of the situation. Retired Major General J. Marcus Hicks draws parallels between the current situation in the Sahel region and Afghanistan in the 1990s, 
highlighting the potential consequences of abandoning Niger and its neighbors to jihadist activity. Hicks emphasizes the risk of leaving behind a power vacuum that could be exploited by US rivals like Russia and China. He warns against the possibility of Russia's Wagner Group stepping in to provide security assistance, which could exacerbate instability with its heavy-handed tactics. The US response to coups in other countries has varied based on perceived national security interests. While the Obama administration refrained from labeling the events in Egypt as a coup in order to continue military aid, the US halted military cooperation with Mali in 2020 and suspended military assistance to Guinea in 2021 after their respective coups. Similarly, aid to Burkina Faso was frozen following the ouster of its president in 2021. Tibor Nagy, a former assistant secretary of state for African affairs, sees the coup leader's defiance in Niger as indicative of America's diminishing global influence amid the rise of other powers. He suggests that the world is transitioning from a unipolar to a duopolar system, with middle powers gaining significant leverage. Thanks for watching until the end. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and a subscription so you don't miss any of our future content.